Looks to Huda. Hello. Uh, I can't believe it's actually been a couple of months since I did a haul, but here we are. I've got a lot of books. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing laundry in the background, so you can probably hear that. Um, it is November 18th, and uh, I've been doing NaNoWriMo, so I really haven't been reading all that much, kind of on purpose, um, because I don't want to let what happened the last time I did Nana Remo happen, which was I basically kind of just wrote fanfiction for Carry On rather than writing my own story. Um, so here's what I have been reading. Uh, if you've been watching my Nana Remo videos with Cherish, you probably have already seen it. Writing fantasy and science fiction by Orson Scott Card and others. Uh, I am almost done with it. As you can tell by the tabs, I'm really glad I purchased this book. Uh, it's been really helpful because I am writing a fantasy novel. It's a really good resource for people wanting to write fantasy and it's really, it's not um, focused on one particular kind of fantasy or sci-fi either. There's a lot of sections of terms that are defined. I'm really finding the weapons and armies sections really helpful. Uh, because while I really enjoy reading battle scenes, I don't, I haven't really thought about the logistics of battle before, and also fantastical weapons, which I'm pretty sure there's one I'm actually going to give. Well, there's two I'm going to give, one, eight, one to each of my characters. Writing deep scenes, which I actually just bought yesterday from Barnes & Noble, plotting your story through action, emotion, and theme, because what I most worry about with my novel is my narrative voice. Um, I do a lot of for free and direct discourse, which means I, sp maybe it's third person omniscient, I don't know, but I'm sure this will tell me. Uh, I just spend a lot of time in the characters' heads and I feel like I'm telling everything versus having things actually happen in the present. And I know that's something that I always do with my writing. So I don't know, I think I imagine that all of my characters are as introspective as I am and I don't think that's true. So maybe this will help. Let's just take a moment. Ah. Apparently this is the month of beautiful collector's editions because not only is this here, but also this is here. This is the beautiful 10th anniversary Name of the Wind edition. Um, I, I've always wanted to read it and I had the tiny paperback and I was like, I hate reading tiny paperbacks now. So then I went to a bookstore and saw this. I didn't even know it was coming out. And it has red pages, and red, as you may note, is my favorite color. And look at it! And look at it! And also, Lin Manuel Miranda is the guy who wrote the blurb on the back! <sighs> so, I feel like this will be my reward once I finish my novel. Like, I get to the end of the first draft, I will read this, and oh, it's gonna be great. Not to give this short shrift because holy hell, it's beautiful. This is the first book I read by Victoria Schwab. She is now my favorite author. She is my writing idol. She's kind of who she and Lady Gaga, if they were like one person, are who I want to be, which it's a bit ambitious. <laughs> but I mean, it's just beautiful and uh, and fan art. And if you, I mean, there's also a special edition, Barnes and Noble edition, which I saw yesterday, but I think I'm happier with this one because I like the colors better. They're both beautiful, but this one I, I got from Amazon. I mean, it even has a ribbon. Oh, if you have not read this series before, I, I recommend picking this version up because it has a glossary of all the magical terms and it has like a, a discussion in the back, which I haven't read with her and her editor. And oh, it's just the most, it's hooray for collector's editions. Stephen King's The Dead Zone, which I picked up because I heard him, or I didn't hear him, I read what he says about it in On Writing, and it seems really interesting uh, because it's about, <laughs> well, if you look up the plot, you'll see why I find it interesting. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sleep by Philip K. Dick. I want to read this because I've seen both Blade Runners now and I really love them uh, with some, you know, feminist, like, eye rolling, uh, but I really am curious. This book I picked up because it was mentioned by a few different authors on the 88 Cups of Tea podcast uh, by Yin Chang, and uh, it's about, it's called The Anatomy of a Story, or of Story, and he's a screenwriter, but I'm sure there are things in here I can use. While I was reading that writing fantasy and science fiction book, the author talked a lot about uh, Wild Seed and gave a couple of uh, 
examples using her writing and it's Octavia Butler and I read Kindred this year and it was perfect and haunting and wonderful and so um this is four novels in one. I was just looking to buy Wild Seed on its own and then I saw that I could get all of these for way cheaper than just one so I bought this and I really like the edition and I want to read it soon. This is maybe something I've mentioned before. I'm an Outlander fan and I was wandering the romance novel section in Barnes Noble with Cherish one day and saw Kill or Be Killed by Victoria Roberts and just look at it! Like, Kill or Be Killed? It's the greatest title ever! Um, so I bought it on Amazon and it's, I haven't started it. I may never read it! I just wanted to own Kill or Be Killed because it's called Kill or Be Killed. Uh, something I also bought on Amazon that I haven't read yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Mortal Instruments graphic novel. I'm kind of burnt out on the Mortal Instruments series, but I wanted to grab it now while I could because Cassandra Jean's art is absolutely beautiful. Um, oh, I didn't even look at the inside yet. Wow. Wow. I mean, eh, but wow. I'm assuming... I don't even know if I know who that is. Is that Alec? I guess, and that must be Jace. Um, because... Oh, and there's Magnus and Simon. Aw. Yeah, I'm glad I bought this now. Uh, basically, I'm really disappointed with Shadowhunters, the TV show. I have officially stopped watching it because I can't bear it anymore. It's just so bad. And it has nothing to do with the story anymore. And uh, it's really frustrating because I think they could have done a really great job if they'd tried. Um, and I just don't get how it's still on television. Like... It's not the actor's fault, it's the writer's fault. It's... The books are so good! Why can't people make them into movies? And TV shows. <laughs> Last book I bought new in Barnes & Noble, The Book of Dust. Uh, I have a lot of feelings about Historic Materials by Philip Pullman. This is a kind of... it's not really a sequel, but it's kind of a concurrent book going along with it. Um, this I can see happening kind of um, before the first book. Golden Compass here or Northern Lights in England, but this is pretty. Uh, it's called La Belle Sauvage, but I mean the Book of Dust is bigger. Mm. So I started it, I'm about 50 pages in, and then NaNoWriMo started and I was like I can't keep reading because I need to be writing, but it was entrancing and just taking me back into the world and I do want to read this in the winter probably by a fire. Okay, now on to used books. I went to Half Price Books in Cleveland and I bought some books. <laughs> Had a couple of these before, but I finished buying, there might be one more, I don't know, but it's Tanya Huff's Sing the Four Quarters books. Um, I wanted to track down all of these really cringe-tastic 80 covers, 80s covers, and look at them. They are beautiful and terrible. And um, what got me out of a giant reading slump this year was her novel, The Firestone, and I just have wanted to get back into her writing ever since. Her writing is something I feel like I can emulate. Uh, she has really strong female characters and does a really good job of making sure that women are not just characters who speak, like they're also characters in the background, which is something that I don't think enough authors do. A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. Uh, and also picked up Steering the Craft, which I forgot I bought there. I've had it so long I forgot <laughs> uh, that I bought it, but I've been working on this before NaNoWriMo. Was planning to do all the exercises before then, did not get to it, but it's helpful. And so she's a staple of fantasy and I can't believe I really haven't read anything of hers before. Writing Past Dark, Envy, Fear, Distractions, and Other Dilemmas in the Writer's Life by Bonnie Friedman. It looks very atmospheric and something about writing. I got The Exile. <laughs> it's the Outlander graphic novel that apparently isn't that great, but I just flipped through and looked at the art and I was like, yeah, it's pretty. I mean, I don't really want to reread the entirety of Outlander, but this would be a faster way to do that. So those are all of the books I've bought recently. I really need to slow down, but they just keep putting out great books, so I can't. And uh, I just want to keep, I just need to spend time reading and not just buying. Uh, but with NaNoWriMo, that's not always possible. So, <sighs> anyway, that is the end of this haul. Thank you. Let me know what you're buying, reading, talking about below, and I will talk to you again soon. Books to